So we're going to learn how to use ChatGPT to summarize emails for us. Reading emails takes a long time and people often fluff email up with unnecessary words in order to sound more formal, professional, etc. So picture yourself in this scenario, you get to work, it's Monday morning, you're ready to go, ready to do so much work and then boom, you have like 50 emails like this. This email is so long that you can't even really tell what it's about. It says at the top, sales figures and HR summit in Honolulu, but what are the salient points? So what can we do about an email like this? Maybe a hundred emails like this. ChatGPT can help us a lot of time by summarizing this email. So what we'll do is we'll copy it. And we'll start by just punching the whole email into the ChatGPT box. And we'll say, Summarize the above email in 100 words or less. It says the email provides an update on Q3 sales figures and review of the HR Summit in Honolulu. The sales team achieved remarkable growth with 6.2 million revenue and 15% increase compared to that list year, etc., etc. So it has distilled a lot of information from this email just like that. And if you're the kind of person who gets a ton of emails every day, this is already probably getting you really excited about the possibilities here. So we can continue. Now that it knows what email we're talking about, we'll say, give me a point form summary of only the parts of the email involving numbers or figures. So now we're saying, don't give me a paragraph, give me a point form summary. Wow, and just look at that email that it writes. It's, you can see it's made a bit of a mistake since we asked for only numbers and figures, but it's giving us all this stuff about the HR Summit in Honolulu. Um, but these don't have any numbers of figures. So ChatGPT is kind of doing its best, but it didn't really understand us. Let's refine our prompt. And we'll say exclude the HR summit. We don't care about that. And we'll try again. And now it's given us a really nice point form summary of all the important details. If only the person who sent this email could have been so helpful. So how else can we ask you to summarize? So let's say create a table summarizing the email. And so it has this very cool table that it's made for us, which nicely contrasts the sales figures for North America, Europe, and Asia and Pacific. And it also is kind of warning us, it seems like it has hallucinated these numbers. It's saying that the revenue rate breakdown for product B and C is not specified in the email, but hey, no problem, ChatGPT will just make something up. And so finally, here's a little bonus. Let's just say we want to write a quick reply. We don't have any time, let's save some more time. Write a quick informal reply in 100 words or less to that email saying I am happy with the results. And ChatGPT writes the email. We make sure that we approve of the contents and we can send it along. And we've just used ChatGPT to summarize emails. It's a very powerful tool for summarizing stuff because even though it's not so smart, it can read things unbelievably quickly. It can read a whole book in under a second. So. Even though it can take us 20 minutes to read an email as humans because we're not optimized for downloading data into our brain, ChatGPT is. So even though we understand its limitations, this is one of its biggest strengths. So in this clip, we'll use ChatGPT to extract the salient points from a white paper. We all know white papers, they're long, they're full of information, they take a long time to read, and we don't really have all that time to read the white paper. So let's start by getting some material. 
So I'll just go to coin metrics and I'll pick up the latest coin metrics state of the market, which is a free white paper that coin metrics puts out on um, what's going on in the cryptocurrency world. So here's the state of the market. And as you can see, there's some good diagrams, but then also lots of text. So all we need to do to get Chappie GPT to summarize this white paper for us is copy the relevant text in. So let's go to ChatGPT and we'll say summarize the following white paper. We'll put a couple of line breaks with shift enter and we'll just paste it in. It has a lot of line breaks in it that are unintended, but ChatGPT is good at kind of ignoring those. And away it goes. Discusses several developments in the cryptocurrency market. A company that specializes in ETFs has refiled its application for Bitcoin ETF. So that's good, but it's still a lot of text that it's, we've given a lot of text and it's kind of reduced it a bit and given us the salient points, but it's still complicated to read. So we can continue to refine the summary that it gives us until we're pleased. So we'll say, summarize it in no more than 10 point form points. And we get what looks like a pretty convincing summary. It gives us these very brief, very concise point form explanations as to the block of text we've given it. Let's ask it for something even shorter. Summarize it in no more than 10 point form points of no more than 70 characters each. I'm not actually sure how much 70 characters is going to be. That's actually going to short it down. Oh, that's actually pretty short. So look at it goes. It turns them all into single lines. Competition intensifies for SEC's Bitcoin ETF decision. Celsius to sell 170 million altcoins in bankruptcy proceedings. Now, always there is the caveat that ChatGPT is prone to hallucinate. So it could make something up right here for one of these point forms. If you're going to use anything as the basis of business decision, you're going to want to double check. But this is definitely more efficient than trying to read. Like, can you imagine reading the whole block of text we pasted? We pasted and I never would have made it to the end. This, you could send this to your coworker and be like, here are the important points. They'd be like, wow, that's cool. So another interesting thing is, let's say we're using ChatGPT to summarize it. At any point, we can ask ChatGPT to explain stuff. As long as the information is not excessively new, it will be able to give us more information. So we can say, Tell me more about Hong Kong. And away it goes. ChatGPT is amazing at these tell me more about stuff. It even is smart enough to link it. Like I was expecting it would just say, you know, Hong Kong is a place with, you know, 10 million people, but it's actually trying to infer connections between Hong Kong and cryptocurrency. How accurate these connections are is dubious. But if we, we can double check them for anything that we want to use in our day to day business. And saying it's dubious isn't to say that the data is necessarily wrong. It's just saying that we should have a healthy amount of doubt about anything that a generative AI says. Even though it's trying to help, generative AIs are notoriously good. Well, I'm not going to use the word we like to use around here because that could get my course a PG rating, but it can make stuff up. So that's how we can use ChatGPT to summarize a white paper. Finally, let's say summarize it in the form of a table. And we'll just be clear, summarize the white paper in the form of a table. So it doesn't think that we want to summarize our, its explanation of Hong Kong. So this is amusing. So uh, ChatGPT says it can't generate a table format, but it can provide a summarized version of the white paper contact. That's actually straight up not true because in another video in this course, we see ChatGPT make a really convincing table, but sometimes it just kind of convinces itself that it can't do it. And there's not much you can do to, to kind of give ChatGPT a pep talk and make it make a table. 
but maybe I'll summarize it some other way. Summarize the white paper in the form of a limerick. In the crypto market news did swirl, Valkyrie aimed for a Bitcoin ETF twirl. Teamed with Coinbase they tried, SEC's decision they eyed, while altcoins faced challenges in a whirl. Not gonna win any poetry contests, unfortunately ChatGBT is very bad at writing poetry, but hey, we summarized the white paper and even learned a bit about cryptocurrencies in this clip. This means that in the business world, we often have to navigate through endless legal documents, agreements, disclaimers. And while ChatGPT is not a silver bullet for understanding and summarizing legal documents, it certainly can help. So let's get some legal sounding text and try to use ChatGPT to make sense of it. I've just gone to the website of the Canada Revenue Agency, a notoriously complex and opaque bureaucracy that just loves complex legal documents. Of course, all their legal documents are intended for use by an average citizen, but are too complicated to understand. So here are the terms of use just for using the website that you have to use in order to pay your taxes in Canada. And while we should read this whole thing before agreeing to it, we can start by using ChatGPT to summarize it. So I will copy this and go to ChatGPT. So first, let's try a straight up summary. I'll paste in the legalese text. And I'll say, summarize this document in a few readable paragraphs. And away it goes. So you'll notice that ChatGPT is summarizing what's written in the document it's managed to kind of comb out a uh, few points and its summary sounds like this. Users must provide accurate and complete information for managing their personal income. Users are responsible for the confidentiality of their signed information, etc. So we've reduced the quantity of stuff that we have to read to about half and we've already gotten some important points of it, such as what our responsibilities are. So let's ask for a more detailed summary. Let's say, the person who signs this document is referred to as you. What actions would you be required to take if you agreed to this document? And away it goes. So now it's turned into nine points because it's just taking um, is just figuring out what we're kind of agreeing to, but it's ignoring points that don't really bind us in any way, such as how the Canada Revenue Agency said it's not liable to damage or problems caused. So let's ask it another question about the document. Indicate in point form what the CRA is not liable for. And so it gives us in point form what the CRA is disclaiming liability for. So this could be useful, for example, if we have a disagreement with the CRA and we want to just summarize this document to see if they have indeed disclaimed liability for some particular concern, such as let's say someone used our information illegally or fraudulently. Well, it says in the summary that the CRA is not liable for that, and we can double check in the original document. It, it's, it's actually pretty hard to read the original document, but we could go through it in detail to confirm this. This point form summary is a great way to start. So let's ask it to make a table comparing what the CRA is achieving by this document and what the person agreeing to it is 
achieving by agreeing to this document. So we'll say create a table comparing the effect of this agreement on one U to the CRA. And so it does a pretty good job. And this table actually just about summarizes the document. The you accept responsibility for the accuracy of the provided information. CRA is not liable for certain damage, non-acceptance of information, etc. You must comply with suspension or revocation of access. The CRA can suspend or revoke access for various reasons. So you can imagine how useful a table would be if you say had a document that was hundreds of pages long. And now it's important to note that ChatGPT cannot yet process documents of a length of 100 or so pages, but this is still a very good way to get a good outline of legal and technical documents before you have to read them thoroughly. It's also a good way to determine kind of what the overall contents of a document are if you want to decide if it's worth sending to your loyal lawyer for an expensive review. And that's how to summarize legal documents using ChatGPT.